Hello there, I'm Freelance1787. This is my tutorial on the Trevor only route for the speedrun of Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse. So, to demonstrate this, I will have a webcam and hand cam along to go with the game. The hand cam obviously meant to show the inputs in live. So, the inputs live on the controller, I'm playing on NES, uh, NES front loader as well as a brick controller. So kind of beginning this game, obviously you have the name screen, you can do a lot of things with it, whether it's a lot of things with the name screen that's not important, and what's important is the speedrun itself. Let's begin. So level one's pretty simplistic overall. For the most part, nothing too challenging. The timing starts on control. Not unlike CB1 or CB2, there isn't really a good countdown timer because you're mashing through cutscenes sometimes, or you're letting it play. Which is better to start. So we're gonna the first section here. We're gonna find the stairs. And we're gonna hit the skeleton. So in the NES version, stage one is the same no matter what you do. Now we're on our first vertical platforming section. So you saw there that bat dropped a heart. That's something to note, because in this game, common enemy drops will yield sub-weapon drops every fifth enemy drop that you get in this speedrun. And in the Trevor Only route, you're going to see a lot of drops, thanks to the Holy Water, which is the sub-weapon of choice in this particular route. So we're going to go, once again, go up here. We'll demonstrate that later on. But make sure you're on top of your drop counts so you don't get surprised by drops. See there, we did a sequence break with the platforms and skipping a section of stairs and grabbing the holy wire one more time. Show it. And jump, kill the bat on the way down. Jump, jump. Here, you're gonna take the stairs. And instead of going to the right, you're gonna jump left. And that way, it's a little bit of a sequence break. You're gonna grab your holy wire. And holy water is the preferred sub weapon for the majority of the speed run. Of course, we reset and there's an extra heart from the bat. From here, it's jump, jump, jump. Get your holy water, jump back up. Now, with the holy water, we're going to try and hit candles and enemies in order to build up enough hits to spawn a multiplier. And having a multiplier in this game is very important. But one thing to note. You can see on the first screen of 1-2 that I picked up a whip upgrade, so from a leather whip to a short chain whip. One more thing to note is you can cancel a long fall by... And I'm going to demonstrate it here. You can cancel a long fall animation, landing animation from a long fall. So I'm going to pause here and show you. You can see that. really see it but I'll explain here so if you take a long fall there's a landing animation you have to wait about 0.3 seconds to recover it's 18 frames at 60 FPS it's a uh, 0.3 seconds to take the fall so instead you want to time your whip strike as you land I apologize for the uh, resetting. This is probably driving me nuts. Again. Using the whip strike to cancel a long fall. Takes 0.3 seconds. Also, your whip strike will kill the skeleton. So once again, we're going to jump on this platform. Fall. Use the whip to cancel. One thing to note is at this point, you should have the long whip. Long whip is very advantageous for the Trevor Only speed run. Careful of those blue blocks, uh, those blue platforms. If you jump on them, they will rotate down. And you can fall. You don't want to fall. So you can see I've already built up enough hits for a double shot, which is actually somewhat problematic. If I can get a different pattern. So there are different patterns you can get with this screen. You can one zombie in front too. 
Of course, I'm gonna get the same consistent pattern with the save state. Just how it is. So if you get this zombie pattern, boost. It boosts and that saves you a few frames. But if not, you just keep going. You can take a damage boost there. Different ways to uh through here. For the most part you get over them. You wanna limit as many jumps as you can. Because in this game, extra jumps will cost you four frames. And they add up over the long haul. So now we'll explain this next screen. 1-3. This is probably the most technical screen in this level. So the fast way to do it is doing it this way. Because I'm explaining right here. That's the fast way to do it. So I'm going to explain how that works. We're going to jump. Use the whip to cancel landing. Jump. And then we're going to take a jump as the Fleeman are behind us. That intentionally delays four frames. And the Fleeman can now push from behind. We take four damage boosts. Conversely, you could do this strat. Get through. That's another way to do it. Don't do it that way, by the way. That flaming will drop. Unless you want it to drop. Your count is four. Go again. Jump. Bump. Bump, then jump throw. That last damage boost right there is a three frame window on the fireball. Don't worry about hitting it. If you don't get it, it's no big deal. Just don't take a knockback if you can avoid it. Blade is okay. Really is not. So I'm explaining here. In order to do the strategy, you must make sure you do a successful landing cancel animation. Landing animation cancel with your whip. Otherwise, it's better to resort to the slow strat. So I'll demonstrate that. So, let's say you fail to do it. My recommendation is then to just throw holy water, take the drop, make sure you've got a double shot before you try that though, of course. And you just revert back to the classic. The classic, uh, thing. But I think you can learn the new setup pretty easily and watch your health as well. Classic setup also works if you're low on health. Of course, I'm gonna do it one more time to show you how to set up a triple shot. Obviously, it's the same process as getting a double, except you already have the double. Roughly about 8 to 10 hits, I'm not sure what the exact number is, to get your multiplier. So if you hit that bone pillar with a double shot, you're guaranteed triple. Now we're going to set up 1-4. Get that rosary to clear out enemies. Damage boost up the first zombie. Second zombie if you've got 6 health. If you've got a health divisible by 4, do not boost. Will not save any frames doing so. Because it'll come back in the countdown. So again, one four. Make sure you hit this candle for the triple shot, as well as the rosary drop, which is a screen nuke in this game. You want to get rid of all these enemies. So if you want to deal with the zombie, you can jump over him. If you have four health, if you have six health, take the forward walking boost. It doesn't matter. Try and get past these guys. Oh, I'm taking damage boost. Whoopee. Don't actually try this. So this is the first boss of the game. I affectionately refer to him as Richard. And that's a story for a live stream. You can see how qu how triple shot holy water just completely vaporizes bosses. You can see where I'm setting up just a little bit. That's too far to the right. Do so you want to aim your holy water? Right to about the center of Richard's hitbox. You don't want to set yourself up. And see how effective that weapon is. Nice swag strat at the end is what I call the campfire strat. Is what's referred to as the campfire strat. Let's exhibit it one more time. A nice little fun strat to do at the end, since there's a few places to actually do some swag strats. It's really only a kind of just something fun to do on stream. 
So that should be stage one. Pretty easy. It's the same across the board for every first level game. Now we got a fork in the road. At the end, you can either go up to the clock tower, which we won't do in this run, or you can go down. But since this is a Trevor only speed run, we're gonna take it. We're gonna go down here. That should conclude level one. Now we're gonna start level three. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump, late throw the holy water to get this big heart candle. And then we have a ghost coming up here. We're just gonna walk up the stairs. Then we get to the top of the stairs, ghost close in, throw the holy water, done. You, one thing to note is you can, in this game there is an auto whip feature in this game. So if you are on stairs, you can hold the B button while holding up in order to force a holy water. Now we're in the first difficult section of level three, the owls. So kind of the key here is trying to manipulate the owls to do a high swoop above you while you're on the ground. Holy water also serves as a means, but of course, if you're not careful, sub weapon drop. You don't want that either. Be on top of your count. So in my case, my count is three. So there's four. So the next owl to die that way is going to and right here, I'd recommend if the owl has to do a little stutter step to force a rightward boost. So getting through this owl screen, you want to have at least six health. Six bars of health so you can do damage boost in 3-2. Otherwise, you're going to have to do a few things. Now we're going to take care of the Fleeman. Jump whip on the way down. Robert here, the red skeleton. Easy kill with the holy water. Like again, hold B on the stairs while climbing him. So this bone pillar, we're gonna, after taking the fireball boost, we're going to take a damage. want to make sure you're barely in this hitbox before you do your first jump. Barely in this hitbox. You jump over that. All right. I think I'm in a bad situation here, so I'm going to try walking. So now, so with this uh, bone pillar, there are two ways you can go about it. The first is waiting for two flashes, two red flashes, and the second one, jump. One, two, jump. That was late. One, two, jump. That's the setup that K-Mac and JC used for that bone statue right there. You could also look at the ground. The assignment's foot's over the line there. See that area where Simon's foot is. You can use this feet or you can look at the bone pillar to see, when you see two flashes. You're done. All right, so we got a door up here. This is meat. So hidden block has meat. And getting the meat restores your health by eight. It's something you want to do if you're not confident in level three, but second half of level three, but if there's no danger in going in with low health and I'll explain why. This is the faster strat. So now we're at another fork in the road. This is the big one. You can go down if you're taking the Alucard route or if you're going for any percent runs on Grant. But since it's Trevor only, again, we're going down the middle. The so first screen of 3-3. Three, three. Jump. One, two, quick throw. Bird, bad, bad bird. Two, three. It's four jumps. One, two, three, and four. So we're gonna set up here. Then you're gonna take a big jump, use the whip, the overwrite the landing animation. We're gonna take out these balloon pods. Gotta be careful because from the dropping. Those enemies can be prone to dropping on run to run, so you gotta be careful on which frame you kill them on. This is an unverified rumor, but I believe, based on previous task work, that a drop occurs if it, a drop occurs if an enemy dies 
within eight seconds of a change. In the timer, so. Well, one wants to frame count this for me, be, be my guess. You saw that last minute there, it gets that balloon pod to spawn high. Now we're gonna enter 3 4. 3 4 is a little bit tricky, obviously. First thing you do is you whip Richard. How dare witch, ri Richard attempt to use a whip against the master of the whips? So, we'll show Richard how you're supposed to use a whip. Take out the spider. I got this one too. Watch out for the drops. Jump over the whip, over the second whip. Ri I cannot talk. So again, we show Richard how to, how you're supposed to use a whip. Kill the spiders because fuck spiders. My least favorite thing in the world. Jump, throw. I want to show Richard how to use the holy water. Got spider here. Gotta be careful. Watch your drop counts. We got a drop. You can actually, so I'll show you a fun strat. Alright, so that axe drop is baked in the cake here. So, if your count is four, I'm gonna put the save state here. You can actually do this. That forces a drop from the spider. Nice little trick to have. If you know your sub weapon count is four, force it there. You don't have to worry about dropping level four in stage four. Alright. I'm gonna set up the Cyclops here. So what I recommend doing after triggering the fight, walk up to the block, break it. And then when Cyclops starts charging, get ready to throw a hole of water. So, you notice... Again, let's do the fight again. Cyclops, when he charges, does 4 HP damage. But I'm not dead. Did you notice that? There's actually a fun thing in this game. If you take fatal damage, but if you land on meat, not, Trevor Belmont does not die. And he comes back with 8 health. Fun little trick. Keep in mind. So then we're gonna take care of Cyclops. We're gonna do one, two. And you have more than enough damage. Damage is irrelevant. Then break the block, wait for Cyclops to start charging. Classic strats. That's a classic way to kill Cyclops. In fact, that's how I kill Cyclops in stage seven. Again, we want to overlay multiple holy waters because the hit damage stacks. And if we're done, one, two, three, campfire. That's the Cyclops fight level three altogether. Right there, Mas I would recommend putting a save save for Cyclops and practicing that quick kill that I exhibited here. So after you defeat Cyclops, Sypha becomes freed from her stone prison and asks for help. But this is Trevor only, so we say no. This ending is no longer canon. Hold A at the end of the battle in order to get to the cutscene. So let's now begin level four. The so first thing we're gonna do, jump and throw. There we go. Nice little shout out to Arcus. So again, another jump and throw. Take care of now. The now Richard has obtained a sword, and his head is cut and cut off because he's not very good with it. We're gonna set up a safe state here. So you're gonna see here. You're gonna jump and use again. Time the whip so it land the whip to cancel out the landing, but also kills Richard, this headless swordsman of Richard. And takes this guy out with the holy water. We'll do it one more time. I'll show you the... So my visual cue to jump is right here. When I get to here, jump, whip. Bam. We need to take him out that way. Alrighty. Now we're in the 4B. We'll begin it first half of this. So 4B is noted with a couple big damage boosts. Well, not big. One's big, one's small. I like to get these hearts, these candles. So then we're gonna set the damage boost. Up. We can see the ghost. 
So I like to jump from here. Halfway to the last block. Bump. We're setting up again for the halfway last block. Jump and bump. Boost. Keep holding right. Mm, tidbit, if you've taken a little bit of damage, in the wall. But this is a speed run. We don't want meat. We want to. We don't want to stop for meat. Gonna whip Richard here. Jump over the ghost. Get that candle if you want. Now we're gonna set up a next damage boost here. This is a tough boost. Very tight. You can see as I just showed Route Y. So that's a knockback. Conversely, you could just opt to kill the ghost. But that's gonna cost you. That's gonna cost you point. Uh, that's gonna cost you basically a second. To kill the ghost. More if you miss on the first whip strike. Conversely, you can go for another damage boost. Like that. You can see how tight that damage boost is. You gotta be careful. You have to be almost close to falling off. And then jump underneath. So now we're gonna finish out this room. This is a very terrifying screen to be on if your drop count is four. Now we're four C. This is the first sign of platforming here. We got elevator platforms going from top to bottom here. First of its kind in this game, but not the last. So again, we're gonna wait. This is a two cycle. You have to wait for the second cycle of platforms. In the grand run, you can go in one cycle of pla elevator platforms. So we're gonna set up another safe state here. So, I'm, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm gonna throw a holy water to try and hit that ghost. If it's three hits, half a block past the stairs, walk up. Then three hits. Walk past the stairs and up. It's a small little frame and nip. And obviously if you kill it, the holy water it's gonna drop. One more time. I'm gonna try and see if I can get the two hit pattern. There. If you get the two hit pattern, just walk, just climb the stairs quickly. And now we're at Medusa. I do a five whip buffer. And then oh, overlay the holy water. So my visual, my uh, setup spot is right here. We're gonna have. Medusa is not very challenging boss with triple shot holy water in any game. As long as you overlay the holy water in the hitbox cleanly, you're good to go. Medusa doesn't put up a fight at all. But we're now gonna talk about this. So there's conversely two ways to do this screen. This is how I like to do it. I like to do a triple jump setup where I chain three jumps. Because the key is you don't want to strike this candle. That's a, that's a dagger. We don't want that. So there's two ways to do this. So my triple jump setup where jump one is to jump up on the higher platform. Jump two is to get in position to strike Sir Richard here. And then the third one is to jump over the dagger. Conversely, another setup is to set up it this way. You anticipate the stab strike and jump over it. Like that. It's a little dangerous, but it works. If you mistime it, though, you're going to get hit. You can see what happens when you mistime it. I think you have to be halfway on the first crumble block. Be in position. So on this one, I do a double. So in this situation, I do a double jump and runs. But you can actually wait until you're here. Uh, where's the jump? Jump. Okay, right foot. Here? No. Halfway? Yes. You can wait until you're la halfway through the last block. Jump over the sword attack. And jump over, but I just do a double jump. 
there's two ways to do it, obviously. Then we're gonna take care of these guys underneath and use the holy water to burn through the block. We climb up the set of stairs. More meat. If you're low on health, grab the meat. Doing for top time, don't grab it. I'm gonna walk through here because we already burned the enemies through here. Jump, whip. And then we're gonna climb the stairs. So like I said, elevator platforms in 4C. 4D is famous for its seesaw platforming. I'll explain. Easy way to do it. One. One, two. One, two. Walk, jump. Conversely, there are different ways to do it. One, two, one. Jump on, walk. I don't recommend it. I feel like... One, two, jump. This makes it easy. One, two, one, two. Walk a little bit, jump. I think you can actually chain four jumps in a row. One, let's try it. One, two, three, four. Yeah. You gotta walk a little bit on that last one. I don't recommend walking down after the third jump. Now here comes a, da a very dangerous and cheap death section of level four. The birds! No birds! No! Don't do it! All right. Ow. So if you want to go through here quickly, you gotta be ready. To, you gotta be ready to fire holy water at a moment's notice. It's the only way you can deal with these jerks. The birds too close to you on the stairs. Whip it. You can see there are different bird patterns. You get the that bird pieced out because it knows it's coming. So again, bird screen. Give it again. Conversely, you can wait until the first bird attacks. This is a nice safety strat. And the bird's patterns will change based on what your movement is. But if you want to save a couple seconds, you gotta be willing to attack. I mean, well. I would say willing to attack. I'm saying willing to attack in the sense of... Yeah, that second bird's much more problematic if you start from the go. If the birds stay high, you can keep moving. If they're low, you gotta watch for them. Medium spawn from the bird. You wanna make sure that... If you get the medium swoop from that last bird... Whip. High spawn. Duck. Low spawn. Jump over. I mean, here, we're gonna sub boost. Whip if you want. But you're just gonna wait. The ghost to get to a certain point, and you're gonna boost. It saves a few seconds versus taking the long way. And now you're into the boss fight. Two, three. We're gonna dump the ten hearts. So this is the boss fight level four. We got mummies. We're gonna just destroy it, rip them apart with holy water. So next up is Cyclops. Positioning is important because Cyclops will charge based on positioning. If you get a fast charge pattern, jump up for the holy water on this platform, and then overlay two holy water. Uh, overlay as many holy waters on his eyeball as you can afterwards. And that's our first triple campfire in this tutorial. Successful one. Again, Cyclops. Demonstrate again. You get a charge pattern. Jump up, throw. Jump back down. Get yourself in a position. Make sure you use four waters on Cyclops, by the way. My recommendation. You only need seven hearts for the fight. This setup works very well because you don't have to worry about taking damage. Conversely, you could just do a setup here once it's charging. Do this. I don't recommend it because Cyclops can be unpredictable. I prefer this setup. Okay, Cyclops, don't be a dick. Trying to prove point. Okay, charge, jump up, throw. I could have let him die, but obviously you want to throw the third, fourth Holy Waters insurance. In case it doesn't take as much damage, his damage doesn't work as well. And it's the same campfire. So that is level four. Yeah. For the most part, it's just platforming. It's the most difficult boss. And I put that in quotation marks. But once you get into stage five, this is when the game becomes much more difficult. You'll see a difficulty spike in the platforming. From a speedrun standpoint. Now we're into level five. 
go again. We're going to try and set up a damage boost off this first fireball. Let's see it one more time. We're going to move the safe state up the other side of this cutscene. First, and then we'll explain again. So, jump and take the hit. So if you're looking for a visual cue, right here is my visual cue. If you jump too early, you're gonna take a knockback. If you take a knockback, you just set up one, two, and three. Well, new game ate my wimp input, which can happen. So one, two, and three. Good safety strat at the beginning if you don't feel comfortable with that three frame boost. Jump back on if you take the boost. Conversely, you can do this. There are different strats you can do. But once you take that, and if you take the first boost, there's two things you can do. And you see that fireball boost here? That's the fast strat. Another way you can do it is just stop, drop from behind, and then abuse the iframes to get through. Conversely, and then third, you jump through here. Take the hit there, guarantees your push to the right, and then go up. It's slower. So this is a slower strat. Shot from behind. Use the iframes to get through that second bone tower. Second strat. <laughs> That's not it. Second strat. Jump, hit from the fireball from behind, up the stairs. And then here's the fast strat. So you want to climb up to where Fever's knee is... About touching the candle, that's one pixel too far forward. That's one too far back. Although it is not for it isn't the boost itself is not frame perfect, it's a three frame window to hit. That was one frame too early there. Again, same frame. So his knees touching the candle, boost. Now we're into this stair climbing section, the first of two in this stage. We're gonna climb up these stairs, jump, whip, kill that guy. We're gonna climb another set of stairs. And then on the second stair, whip. Up another save state showing you. Here's another drop. This is by design. There are quite a few drops in this level that will be by design. Let's try and get our counts back in order. So again, jump. Jump, toss, holy wire, get the big heart. And then that flying skeleton dies. Alright, so here comes 5A. This is the most technical part. So, see that axe knife through a high axe. So, we're gonna walk to the right and whip it to set up in the net. See if we can get a low axe. If you get a low axe, holy water kill it. Holy water the axe. Wait for the high axe to spawn. And go. We'll do it again. Low axe, holy water. Jump up, boost. A high axe pattern. High axe. Go to the right of the axe, whip it. Wait for the high axe spawn, boost. So that's the axe knight manip in 5A. Now in 5B. If you don't have your holy water, the holy water comes in the second candle I'm gonna hit here. That's the holy water candle if you've lost it. Ah, stairs, please. Again, get the two candles, jump, jump, throw. And climb the stairs. Now we're gonna force drops in this auto scroller. Here. Two, three. I think we have a pretty high drop count, so we gotta be careful. We'll try and outpace the skeleton spawn. I mean, Spear Knight spawn. And jump up here. You can actually jump on the platforms of the ceiling. But. I think my count is four, but. but Okay, yeah, my count was four. Was it, but can't go any higher. And the screen allows you to. So we're gonna reset the drop count here. We're at zero. We have to kill this guy with holy water to go fast, so that's one. Don't want to drop there either. So explain. This upcoming section. So you see this flying skeleton here, you gotta kill it. If you let's say you do any scare but the first. The, there's one stair on there's one staircase you can throw from that that flying skeleton does not drop. So I'll show you five. 
I showed you three and five. Those are between the two the white right stairs. So if you throw from the fourth stair, no drop. And the other stair is a drop. I'm gonna set up a safe state here so I can explain the next Axe Knight Manip. Let's see what pattern we get organically here. But I have safe state on the other side of the door. Reverse, uh, the easiest strat would be to kill him. But obviously that burns holy water and slow. So instead, we're gonna mess with the RNG a little bit by changing the frame that I enter the door. So if you get a low, if you get a high axe, wait for the high axe to come across, jump up, and let the axe hit you on the way back. And then for let's see if we can low axe spawn. It may be a frame roll thing. I could be wrong. Game hasn't been tasked nearly as much as CV1. We're gonna intentionally manip the art. Try and intentionally manip the axe knight pattern to give me a low axe. So, the low axe kill, push, and then kind of just wait for the axe knight to spawn another axe. In the on the high axe that will push you to the left. Neat little trick that shows up also in stage eight. If you're shooting for a fast time. Then my axe. The axe pushing to the left, go up. Give me another high axe spawn. And the axe knight. Axe knight with the high axe, you let the axe go above you and you let it put, hit you on the way back. I went too early. Alright, let's see if I can get a high axe spawn here. Not, there's plenty of material to cover. So now we're gonna cover the bone pillar room 5C. First set of bone pillars, use the holy water to ward it off. Second one, you're gonna get hit on purpose. So now, you can jump and throw, I'll make sure. That was a bad setup. You're gonna throw holy water on the top stair. Second set of fireballs, you're gonna tank. Go up here, jump, throw. Now we're gonna set up here. Boost. You get one fireball, just wait for it to pass and go up. Maybe a frame roll thing. If you get two, you gotta wait. Well, first fireball. If you get a delayed fireball, I'm not sure if I can do it right. One, two, and then. But if you got a low one, you would just go up here, throw the holy water if you get delayed fireball. Get hit from behind there. You're gonna have three hits, it's dangerous. So you got this bird here. This bird can be a problem. It's in the way it goes. I'm gonna kill it. Or you can just opt to keep going. So if that bird is still on the loose, watch out! That first bird can be very troubling to deal with. Right, let's see if I can pause buffer the pattern. Nope. Two. I'm gonna count to two. Doesn't look like it can affect its pattern. It might be a frame roll thing. So you gotta be careful. You may have to do a different setup. Where you, if you get so the easiest way to do it is to stand here, wait for the bird to attack, wait for the bird to start swooping down, and then go after it. Or you can try and yellow it. I'll show you what yellow looks like. So if the bird comes in high, low, attack. If the bird comes in high, stay still. S stairs. Delay your approach if you get a high spe a spawn, so it takes a much steeper angle towards you. Once you get through the birds, the Frank fight. Grab me. And then we're gonna overlay holy water. 
the lag, Frankenstein can cause lag when he attacks. That's pretty much RNG. It's RNG from run to run. And you'll feel the lag before the blocks start falling. But for the most part, it's a pretty easy fight. So now we're into stage six. And stage six is another very technically demanding stage in this game. Five through seven are pretty tough, and then eight's a pretty nice break, and then nine is... Nine and eight are very demanding. Let's see, once again. Starting off stage six. Whip that Fleeman on the way up. Doesn't matter what the Axe Knight pattern is. Jump. Jump over the Axe Knight. Kill the Fleeman. We'll show it one more time. Hand cam showing off my inputs. We're gonna jump over the axe. Jump. Then we attack the Fleeman. 6A, here's 6B. We got water, we got fishmen, we got birds. The trifecta of that, of... Oh god, please help me, platforming. Shoo, bird, shoo. So there's a free hit. Show it off again. One. Two. The birds are annoying. You want to get them off the screen as quick as possible, but they're also very fall well for drops. The drop count should be low entering... Will this bird go away? No. We're then going through here. You're jumping through the water on one side because the water's pushing you to the left. Then when you're on the right side, you walk, because the water's pushing you to the right. And so, on the left side of the screen, you're gonna jump, preserve your momentum, and lose as few, little as momentum as possible going forward. Then on the right, you're gonna walk. So jump, jump, take the boost. Three frame window. If you don't get it, just keep jumping until you hit it. Hit something. Typically, the spacing will work out for hitting the right side of the pool first. Now we're in the 6C. We're gonna kill this Axe Knight. There is a potential damage boost that I'm working on there, but it's difficult. And we're gonna kill the Spear Knight. Guaranteed drop, by the way. And we're gonna jump until we hit the bone pillar, the top of the bone pillar. Keep chaining those jumps, and you should be good to go. Do it one more time. One, two, three, whip. Jump. Keep jumping. Avoid the fireballs. Now we're gonna set the basement. If you get the bat in spawn of you, fill it with the holy water. Alright, so if it spawns behind you, alright. I'm gonna move up the save state away from the bone pillar. So if it spawns behind you, just ignore it, keep going. If it spawns in front of you, just kill it with the holy water. Here, one, two holy waters. Be careful with the timing of the second one. You can always do this. And it spawns in front of you. Fortunately. Okay, now it spawns behind you. One and two. Make sure the Axe Knight Axe is killed. Keep going. We're gonna set up a damage boost here. One, two, three, and throw. Throw on the third jump. One, two, three. Okay, one, two, three. Boost. You're gonna boost off the top of the bone pillar as well. Grab that heart. To go. And one, two, three. Throw. Boost. You're gonna boost off the bone pillar. From power, and then you're good to go. So now we're in the 60. 60 can be very dangerous because of RNG. Block, have a block, kill the bird. Birds are not RNG though. The first bird's not RNG because you can attack it quickly enough. Not worry about damage. So now we got fishmen. They are random. From the run. And they're also capable of dropping. It's... In that example, I obviously didn't get any drops, but we're gonna jump kill. Take out these birds. Whip. Take out the fishmen your way. 
fish are dropped. Like I said, fishmen are, fishmen are dangerous drops, so... Keep in mind, stay on top of your drop count in here and don't get surprised by a dagger. So now we're going to go into the Hydra fight. We're going to start up by setting up here. I'm going to throw in here and try to blow that. So your two cycles set up. I didn't get it. Once again, we're on the final screen. The exact same status state that I have, I recommend putting one here. This is a very technically demanding boss fight. You get two cycles. You don't have to set up for two cycles. You can set up for an easy three cycle as well. If you want to do an easy three cycle setup, I recommend doing this. Throw your holy water and take the damage boost. Easy setup with three cycle, obviously. Again, turn, throw water, the boost. There's not enough holy water to pump out at the end. Got a lot of hearts from this stage. But if you want to go for two cycle, you got it. this is the best way to do it. Alright, so that should conclude stage six. And if you're choosing between Trevor and Sypha, it's literally the same up to this point. It would differentiate in stage 7. Because of, because of the ice spell. Usage of the ice spell. First time it's actually useful, but I digress. It's back to Trevor. We're going to start off by whipping Richard. Right? So again, first thing you want to do is jump down from the top and then take out Richard. And this saves a second over just doing versus this strat. But we're just killing with holy water. Also, probably safe. And because we jumped down, the elevator spawn the elevator platform spawns in quicker. And as a result, the seat's much lower. We'll compare. You can see it's much higher when I get to this point, which is why you want to jump down first. Before you grab it. Jump, grab this candle. And then use these elevator platforms to get across. And then we're going to set up an elevator jump here. And we're going to jump. One, two. Make sure you throw holy water on the second jump. Saves seven seconds versus going around. And watch it again. We're gonna do it one more time. One, two. That's how it's done. And for holy water, take out the Fleeman so I can climb the stairs quickly. Whip. One, two. All right, so I got the board spawning Fleeman. Otherwise, you just keep walking. Now here's 7B. This is the most technically demanding section of stage 7. So you can jump down, whip to get rid of the fireball, as well as cancel the landing. You see there, 1, 2, kill. There's your drop. Grab this candle. And then we're going to set up a pair of damage boosts. That's not it. Actually checking out the last damage boost. Don't have a drop. Alright, let's do it again. I want to make sure I have a drop. My count is one. I want to clear that drop. No. Mistakes are made. We'll do it one more time. So I actually recommend timing it so your whip strike. It's that fireball. Yeah, don't do that. And jump. Time the whip so you hit that first fireball. Go to the first bone pillar. Step the boost on the second one. You can skip it if you want. Three. It counts four. Kill this bone pillar for five. Walk 
backing up, setting up the damage boost here. Jump, boost. Do it again. Grab this candle, too. So there is actually meat in this wall you can pick up. Good beginner strat. Otherwise, just keep going. I recommend grabbing meat if you have less than 8 health. Which, in this case, if you've taken hits, it should be... 7. Don't do that, by the way. So, a good visual indicator for when to jump. Obviously, you can set up jump here, let the thing push you off. That's kind of where you want to be. Jump onto that thing. We're going to walk up there. It's pretty much touching the seesaw platform is typically my visual cue. Otherwise, you'll just whiff. I'm going to set up three jumps here. To cancel the landing. Five pixel jump here. It's actually one of the most difficult 5 pixel jumps, even though 5 pixels is a big amount of... There's a large amount of room. Go we'll through here. Get through there. Now we're on the 7C. Count is 0 in the save state. I like killing that second bird with holy water. Alright, we got two drops, that's okay. We want to advance our drop counter anyway. We're gonna come down here. We have extra hearts, we can get this money bag. Not with that can on the right, that is a cross. That is only for backup purposes, this is not a tutorial for that. We're gonna grab as many cans as we want. And then we're gonna walk down the stairs. Ideally, you catch up to the end of the screen. When Trevor walks down the Osro's floor, that's when you realize you're caught up. I'm gonna set up here. So we got a boss fight. Just like in stage four, mummies and cyclops start off, but we have a third coffin. Now we got cyclops. I want to get him to charge, and unfortunately Cyclops is a lot of But this is typically where I want to stand to try and force a Cyclops charge. This is like a sweet spot. Let's say kill Cyclops. We'll demonstrate one more time. I'm use that breakable platform. Hit. One, two, and three. That's how you take care of Cyclops. Not sure if there's a different setup. I'm gonna mess around with it. But yeah. It's possible to do the, state, uh, the stage three Cyclops setup, potentially. Not really. Again, same setup. Show Cyclops kill one more time. Charge, and then now, now you set up. Quick kill. Go there. Sometimes you can kill Cyclops before you even hit him with the whip. So I got Leviathan Gargoyle coming up here. Pretty easy fight. Just spam Holy Water whips. Stage seven, you've cleared the first set of hurdles. Now the run is serious. Run isn't serious until you kill a vampire killer. Jump throw. I'm mean, sorry, jump whip. You're gonna want to grab that rosary to get around these enemies. What I like to do is jump over the zombie, whip the next one. And you got axe knights here. Their patterns are very unpredictable, so I can't give you anything to work with. If you get the high axe pattern, you can set up here. If not, you can opt to kill the axe knight and advance your drop count by one. Take care of these guys. And just... Let's do it again. I didn't do that screen correctly, so we're going to do it again.
if I get a high X spawn here, I'll show you what happens. Nope. Try again. I'll just show you what happens if you get a high X spawn. Oop. Push to the left and you're good to go. Don't step the next screen. Jump whip. Gotta be careful with your spacing. A little hesitation at the top of the stair. Dropped. Don't hit that block above the door. That is a dry bar dropping on your hearts. No, 3 2. Sorry, 8 2. Pretty easy. You'd have to switch to an axe if you wanted to, but it slows you down. So we're going to take out Richard here. A bunch of Richards here. Take them all out. Now we're going into the second screen of A2. We got blobs. Be careful, they can drop. Again. Burn. Burn. Whip. Burn. Without taking damage. One, two, three. Be careful how you time it up because if you lose. Too many frames, that red skeleton will get you. Alright, some blobs. Through there, we got two hearts. One, two, and two close. Okay, kill the blobs with the holy water. Watch out for drop, potential drops. Have a triple shot I shouldn't worry about. Watch out for drops. Jump over them if you want. One, two, three. On that last accident and just use him to boost. We're gonna up on 8-3. We have a crumbling bridge section and there's a lot of lag, so we're gonna do some lag reduction strats. How are we gonna do it? We're gonna whip some candles. All the candles. This saves two seconds. Believe it or not. And then the lag eases up a bit after you kill that last accident. That last turn that falls into the abyss. I'm gonna be dumping hearts. Got the death. Once you go in phase one, dump two about five hearts. And in phase two is pretty easy. Still five water and just head to the center of the screen. Early whip strike actually doesn't help. You want death to move as quickly as possible. To the bottom of the ground. There we go. Again, dump down to five. You couldn't do that in this case. So dump it down and get the last one. And that's how you deal with death. Very easy. Much easier than CB1 or CB2. No threat of hitting you. Probably one of the easiest late game bosses in Castlevania history. So now we're into stage 9. Stage 9 is for all the marbles. Also, it's important to be on top of your drop count. Stage 9. So we're going to set up what I like to call Gleeman Alley, or also known as Freeland Alley. Since they sound the same. Fire so high, Fleeman, you want to kill with the holy water or duplicates. Low Fleeman, you can kill with the whip. Alright, count should be four. Actually, don't want the holy water. I don't want the drop and I don't want the drop until 9 3. That's my personal preference. The drop count is three in this state. Again. Fleeman on. It's the first attempt, so now we're through. It's kind of how you do the screen. Pretty easy overall. Because you use, you know, which Fleeman to use the holy water on, which ones to use the whip. That one's not very difficult to do. Now we're into 9 2. So 9 2 is challenging in its own right. I'm going to do a hesitation move and then go. 
We'll avoid that spike platform that takes half your hit, health, half your total health. We're gonna say save state, do 9 2. Wait, and go. Good. Stop when the first fireball fires, go when the second one does. Jump, jump, whip. Guess that second fireball shoots. Jump, throw. Not sure if you're gonna drop. If you get a drop, you wanna pick it up. We'll do it to the screen one more time. Stop, go. And again, stop, go. I don't wanna to climb too quickly. Go. Must have lost enough frames for that guy to hit me. Go. If you go too quickly, you're gonna get hit. There, you can walk all the way up if you do it correctly. If not, just take the hit. Up the stairs, take a damage boost, no matter what. Once you have four health, then you kill the axe. Now we're into 9 3. I'm gonna take health as a point. Okay, one, two, three. Axe. Axe is actually preferable because then I can kill this axe knight with the minimal time loss. Actually, no, stopwatch is the best one, so let's. Axe is helpful because I only lose the frames necessary to throw the axe from the time you Stopwatch would give me the least amount of time loss. So you. Show you the stopwatch. But if you can get a drop here, it's perfect. Stopwatch. And you just stop freeze the axe knight, the spear knight there. It's frozen in place and you're in position to kill it. Get to the top of the stairs. About the same time loss, I think. Those are the sub weapons, I could be wrong. So setting up the auto scroller, I'm gonna do with the axe instead of the stopwatch. So, at this point, you've swapped out your sub weapon on purpose. And this is the sub and manip. It's the same in the Alucard run. Except we do it a lot earlier than that with speed run. We're gonna, we're, once again, we require the holy water, but when you grab it again, your multiplier is back to one. What we're gonna do? We're gonna kill this. We're gonna do the same thing we did in stage one. We're gonna kill candles and enemies. Gotta be careful though, my count is very high. Do that. Get out of the way. The fuzz ball. I'm not sure if there's another candle I can strike in order to get the double shot, but that's okay. I am due for a candle. Double shot. Regardless. So at the end, you have the option of picking up the meat. Very preferable option. Or you could just skip the meat. Say YOLO. But I'd recommend. My rule is meet at uh, three quarters health, below three quarters health. Well, by my rule, we're gonna pick it up and continue on. Pick up the meat is about a three second time loss. Get it. Very easy to do, not too much of a detour. But be careful not to force any drops on this screen. No birds, no. So again, 9 4. I wanna be sure. Make sure you jump. I'm gonna get at least a double. There's too many enemies. Get rid of them. As long as you get out of here alive. Getting caught in that trap. You gotta kill the bird. The birds. They get too close. Yeah, this is a very difficult section to clear. You gotta w turn around to kill the birds to do so. But if you wanna go for speed, keep jumping. The waterfall pushes you to the left. 
There's your drop. Now. So now once you got that out of the way, once you drop. Okay, so you got fireball from behind, you gotta worry about the birds. Ah, whatever. We're through here, that's the important thing. Through. I'm gonna have no more than seven hearts of Doppelganger. Eight for triple shot, seven for double. With the Medusa heads, they spawn in front, just kind of do a little shimmy. Walk underneath them. If they spawn behind you, you just ignore them. We're gonna set up the Doppelganger. We're gonna do a little quick holy water toss. One, two, one, two. And then we're just gonna pelt them with holy water whips. Walk into it. That doppelganger came pretty close. Easy stun lock there. You can see how Doppelganger melts with the holy water. So that should be stage 9. If you've cleared stage 9, you're pretty much almost ready to take your victory lap. But there are a few things you have to do in stage A. Before you get to Drac. First, we're going to take out these birds. We're going to do the triple shot axe minip, spawn the axe, spawn the triple shot. Grab axe first, and then triple shot second. I'll show you this up again. I practice all the time. That's how you get the triple shot axe pinup. Now we're going into an auto scroller. You want to stay on top of the screen as much as possible. You got moving gears. Got Medusa head spawning in. So much. So many hitboxes, you want to stay at the top, so that way the moose heads spawn high and despawn. Make sure you don't get hit, though. Ideal route for this stage, you don't want to take any cheap hits. Jump, and then spawn high. At this point, the game can breathe again. Up here, wait for these fireballs to go by. I'm gonna move as soon as that third one passes. Jump, whip, kill, and take a boost, and then hold left. Just hold left and go. If you do it correctly, you only take two hits. Up, walk, all the way. Hit, keep holding left. If you don't hold left all the way, you get, that happens. Conversely, you could also set up a damage boost, but I like my setup of just walking left all the way and just going. Now we're into A2. Whip, jump, grab the 5 heart. Drops are nice, not necessary. Now we've taken care of the skeleton. Should be at 16 hearts. At this point, we jump up here, but again, we're gonna set up A2. So I have 10 hearts. It's by design, jump whip, 11, jump, 16, jump over, we're going to set up trick here, jump, you get left, bat spawn, bang, although I forgot to show where the meat was, so we'll go do a quick detour here, so if you're wondering, there, yes, there is meat in A2, I'll show you where it is. As we take care of Robert. Ow. You whipped me in the deck. Alright. We're just gonna tank. Ow. You whipped me in the kneecap. It was kneecap. Alright. So the fruit point, meat in the wall right here. Grab if you want. Don't whip that candle. That's holy water. We don't need it anymore. But otherwise, if you're going for YOLO, damage boost. If not, you just walk up the stairs. Whip the bats in your way. Going for world record. I'm gonna try again. Going for world record, get that left bat spawn, walk to about here, boost on the pendulum. That's say seven seconds. In the current world record too, with the uh, health situation. No meat meat grab in the current world record. Kind of what separates the top 
the world record from the top three, the other top three runs. I wanted to show off, but I guess I'm too far forward. I'm gonna jump, platform, jump with this candle, five heart. You want to have 27 hearts at the minimum for Drac. So that way you have one to use. So now we're Drac. I'm going to set up with a whip buffer. Too far forward. There. And whip buffer. Good spot. We're going to jump whip and then on the way down throw axis. I'm going to show it again. So I'll get to the spot, whip, then go. The closer you are to Drac, the more frames you have to lose on the axis tosses. One more time. And just watch the technique on the controller cam. By the way, if you go for world record YOLO strats, you have no degree of error. You don't have any hits to give. So make sure you have this practice down before you try it. Now we're going into phase two. So this is how I like to set it up. I learned this quick kill from level engine. Watching level engine runs. In phase two. So that was fast you can drag two. You got drag three, obviously next. Careful not to go too fast, otherwise you get hit by those drops. And again, you don't have any hits to give if you're going for yellow world record strats. So let's track, track three. Only Drax's head is vulnerable. Right, so that's the fast kill with seven hits on the platforms. This is my special kill that I developed three years ago. We'll show that off first. And a half second faster. Standard quick kill on Drac. Again. So your typical Drac kill will look like this. There's a lag. You gotta be careful. Part of the Drac 3 fight also includes manipulating lasers. Two, three. Come on, I have a triple shot. I shouldn't be whipping. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, dodge, eleven, twelve, thirteen, wait for the laser, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So that's the standard kill for drag. Drag three. So we'll do it one more time. Two, three, four, five, six. This is the best way to kill drag without having to worry about lag. Swallowing up an axe. Important you wait for that third laser to shoot down vertically, by the way. So the first laser's fine, you're gonna dodge it anyway. Go over to its left. Want that sick second laser to shoot diagonally. Top left. And you want that third laser to be horizontal. Completely horizontal. And that's what happens when you try to throw axes too quickly. Diagonally up. Want the third laser to be horizontal. Fourth laser to be vertical. So yeah, first laser vertical. Second laser diagonally to the top left towards the top left corner. Third laser you need horizontal. Fourth plate uh that one you want that you want a straight vertical laser on that last one. That's kind of the laser points for Dracula in phase three. So once you've taken care of Drac and the screaming and the platforms are done, that's when the orb spawns in. And final split is on orb grab. So that is my tutorial on Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse for the Trevor Only character route. If you enjoyed the video, 
please consider dropping a subscription on the YouTube channel, dropping a comment and a like. It'll help spread the video around across YouTube so more people can see and learn, learn this speedrun. Pretty fun speedrun overall. It's similar in vain to Castlevania 1 in terms of style, where as the pacing is similar to Castlevania 2 with the controls and everything. Pretty good challenge run if you're picking up CV3 for the first time, and then you can have build that nice foundation before you move on to other characters. So overall, a pretty good run for this category would be Deathless, so right around 30 minutes. Really good run is under 30 minutes, so in that 29 minute range. And if you're really if you really want to push it, at sub 29 is the very top of the leaderboard. Current world record 28.54 at the time of this video. My current PB sits at 29 minutes flat.